Hi, this is Odean here. Today I'm having a look at Takara Tommy's Transformers Legends Jetfire LG07. This is the Japanese take on what was available um, pretty much everywhere here in the West as our version of Jetfire. The main differences are um, obviously the packaging. You can see this is in a, a box which is resealable, one thing that I wanted to have. But the other thing, when we get inside, the red on um, the weapons pack is red instead of chrome, which is the other main reason that I chose this set. Quickly flipping it around, pretty normal stuff. The box is not that rigid, a little bit wobbly, but it is you know, good enough. I really love how Japanese packaging is collector friendly because um, I don't want to buy doubles of things anymore. If I can just get one where it can be put back into the package, I think that is um, preferable to getting one mint and seal box and one loose because I just don't have the space and I don't want to spend the money. So this is really cool. I did the same with RC. I might um, review her later. I don't know. She's only a smaller figure. You just open up the clamshell like that and pop it out. To start with, I've got the landing gear out, which is essentially just this front landing gear. The back landing gear are um, permanently up like this. They're just molded on, but it does have a rolling wheel. You can see it there. That's pretty cool. Um, better than just a molded bump. And the front wheel is also rolling. So uh, if you want, you can move them around. The shape of the jet is attractive. I like the smooth lines coming over the cockpit here. I don't think it's as good as the original, the G1 toy. Um, I think that this nose section is a little bit too short and a little bit too pointy. I, I mean, everybody, I think, really loved the original toy. And this has a lot of nods to that in the shape, the color, the curves, but it isn't as good, I think. And um, that's a pity because this is about the best jet fire we're likely to ever get from Hasbro, at least. And unless there's uh, a masterpiece, I doubt that there's going to be a better official version. So, I mean, it's a good toy for a toy, but uh, from a collecting standpoint, I don't feel like it's even as good in jet mode, which is a little bit of a pity. I no longer have my G1 to do a comparison with, which is a pity because I would have loved to have shown these together, uh, but I've sold all that stuff. But uh, this does at least share some of the same features as that G1. You can fold the wings back like that. I prefer it that way. I always preferred Jetfire that way. He looks so sleek and fast, and this is no exception. It looks kind of faster in that mode. These tail wings can move up and down uh, I think I like them upwards. I think that the extra striping is a little bit unnecessary. The original toy had one red stripe, if I remember correctly. And on this, running my fingernail across there, this red stripe was intended to be between molding lines. They've got some little lines in there. Whereas the second stripe here seems to be more of an afterthought. And I don't think it improves the design. I think it makes it look a little bit cluttered. And the same applies to the second red stripe on the tail here. Turning it over to the underside, it really just gives the whole game away. You can see what's going on with the transformation. Uh, ugly arms and legs visible. The original toy pulled this off in a much more elegant way, and I was much more satisfied with how that looks. What I'm not dissatisfied with is the extra cockpit. I know that some people think that this is a bit of a cheat, just moving this um, fake panel over into the robot mode so it looks like robot mode cockpit. I'm more than willing to accept that this jet on the underside has some kind of sensor pod or sensor bay instrumentation or just secondary cockpit which is visible underneath like that. I actually like the way that looks and I think that is a useful thing. I mean it could just even be cameras in there but I think that is uh, nice and I'm happy for that to be there. Now the head is sitting in here and as long as you keep it bent around the other way you can't really see it and the face does not pop out now the weapons that we come with can snap on over here or peg on rather and you can see that there's a little hole there that just lets the wheel come out so it can still roll even though that weapon is attached we've got some more guns which pop on here and you don't have to put it here you could choose 
to put them on the arms, but it looks a little bit off. Let's get these other ones on while I'm talking about it. Okay, they're, they're harder to come off than they are to go on. And finally, we've got the big gun. The big gun looks like this here wants to bend up, but it doesn't. It's just a design element. With this one, you do have to go and peg it into one of those forearms because it's not got anywhere else. Once you do that, it you lose the ability to roll on the ground. And it also does not really sit flat at a great angle. So whether you put that there or not, it's kind of up to you, but I don't think it's that great. You can pull it off and attach it under the nose like this, but it's um, bordering on ridiculous to imagine that he's going to fly around with this huge rod just sticking out the front of the jet like that and it's a kind of stupid place i don't know why they even bothered to put that peg there shit that's gonna powerful hit the light bulb almost smashed it having a closer look at the weapons you can see that they're painted so it's got a red base which is not chrome in any way with some glossy black paint painted over where the barrel is I think that's pretty good. I like that. It's much better, in my opinion, than having a, a full-on red chrome. That was kind of annoying to me. And the second one here, just a, a smaller pistol-like weapon. Interesting barrel shape. The final one has no black paint. His his big handgun, but it does have the black missile that goes in. Oh, Jesus, that thing just shoots off. It's got a real hair trigger. Probably won't be putting the projectile back in there. For size comparison, I really know that there should be some jets here, but um, I don't have any jets available at the moment. They're all in storage. So what I've got lying around is some of my favorite stuff. Classics Hound. I love Classics Hound. Really love Classics Hound. So I think that's a good scale Hound next to Jetfire. That's pretty awesome. Um, what else have I got up here? Now here's a much maligned and hated toy that only I seem to like. Bi Gear's version of Swerve. I don't know what they call it, but um, supposed to be Swerve, that nice pale salmon, which was a little bit too pale, but I like the transformation. I like the, the just the mold of that toy. And uh, that's not such good scale. That looks a little bit weird, but that's because of the kind of chibi-ish proportions of um, the Eye Gear figure, I think. Um, Finally, I have Raw Snarl. He's still hanging around from the other day where I looked at the dinosaurs, the Dinobots from Toy World. And I also think that that's not too bad of a scale. So if you're looking for a, a classics kind of collection, I think in some ways this version of Jetfire does fit in with some of the more modern figures for classics. I don't buy a lot of official Transformers anymore, so it's hard for me to judge uh, those and do a comparison with those. But with my third-party stuff, if you're looking with the classics kind of toys, I think he does fit in not too bad. One final detail before we get into transformation. This can pop right off like that, and you can have a nice clean jet without the booster pack if that's what you want. Pretty sweet looking. I mean, that's that's uh, it's pretty lean. I like that look of that. I think I like the look of that better. In fact, let's get into the transformation. Okay, so fold these down. Uh, what we're going to do? We're going to pop this one up like this. We want to loosen these and then fold up these little flaps to give a little bit of clearance. Over on the other side, we're going to pull this right out. Now that clearance that we just popped up is so that can move through. For the moment keep it like this just so that that chest section is out of the way. Untab these legs, they have a, a tab up there. At this point we're going to roll this right around like that. Try to get it as far in as you can. Uh, move this back up and you can see in here there's like a little groove. If you push it far enough in it kind of slots in to there where the, the groin bar is which is what we want just to make it secure. 
and then we can rotate at the hip the legs so that they face forward the feet flip down like this I mean it's a pretty simple transformation so far I mean nothing overly complicated here but this is where I think it gets a little bit dodgy so these beams in here are a more flexible plastic if you can see and what we're going to do is we're untabbing um, the shoulders here from the backpack but that's relying on flex within the plastic not an actual transformation joint and as we move these arms down we want to peg them into this slot but again it relies on flexing the plastic it's not a clean transformation you have to be able to bend that plastic and to me any transformation where plastic has to actually flex to accomplish the movements required it, it, it feels like a cheat but in the long run um, it's not just going to feel like a cheat in the long run as plastic gets brittle and age and whatnot I think that is going to end up making the toy uh, just not not durable I think that in time as things get brittle processes like that will end up snapping the beams which is a pity next we want to unpeg this back section and then just concertina it down a little bit and then fold the backpack up there so that they overlap we're almost done um, finally put these flaps back up twist the head around and this is gonna it's a little bit hard to describe there's a peg in there which is going to slot into that chest piece like that it's not it's not going in there we go I've done it so here we have the robot mode some things about this robot mode are quite good I think that um, he's got quite a bit of posability especially if you're comparing him to the G1 um, but you saw that this unpegged as I was moving it it's not locking together too securely but you can kind of put him on the desk in good poses now a lack of ankle tilts I know lack of ankle tilts it's like a cliche lack of ankle tilts makes posing a bit um, difficult sometimes but he does have most of the requisite joints up here we've got posability which is pretty good in the bicep clicky elbows now these are just plastic flexing that click 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 is plastic flexing so again lack of durability that um, kind of have to expect with official offerings these days bit of an ugly gap on the back of the arm here which is supposed to be solved by plugging in his weapon which kind of does a good job now I think that looks good on the Takara Tommy version it looks pretty good the red is nice if you've got the Hasbro version and you have to peg those horrible um, red chrome guns in there it's it's not really as an attractive option as this so you might want to fill them in with putty or buy one of the third party blanks that go in there or maybe even just um, cut your weapons off and modify it if you've got more than one with these side of legs things they can still go on and have him stand at the same time so if you want you can do this although it does feel a bit weird to me having the gun barrels up there but it doesn't really affect the posability and finally his gun this is the one part I wouldn't have minded if it was black it seems a bit weird to be red to me now you can see I've got him in a kind of unnatural pose there and he's leaning back but still doesn't fall over and that's because he's got these huge heel spurs which are quite useful and they don't look too good but they are very useful and I'm guessing they designed that in there because he has got a bit of a backpack speaking of which can still go on so I did pull this off before I did the transformation now it's up to you how the backpack goes you could have it up you could have it down it actually can fully transform with the backpack still on the backpack um, is on a rotating joint like this it's got some notches in there to hold its position I like that that's good and you can see that the cockpit section the nose section it does fit nice and snugly up there in between it 
Um, I think that looks fine. There's no reason not to have it on. And you can see, like that is not going to fall over, even though I'm banging the table there. So those heel spurs really do um, help with the stability. For a size comparison, here he is next to Bad Cube's version of Braun. I think that's what it is. Again, I haven't reviewed this. I have such a backlog. I love this. This is a nice toy. I think the scale is a little bit weird. I mean, this is getting into the realm of Masterpiece, whereas I think Takara Tommy's Jetfire is strictly classics. The styles do match well together. I mean, both of these guys have pretty nice head. You can see that it's got that real Skyfire look to the head there, not a Jetfire look. We've got decent posability on it too. I quite like the head. It's, it's very nice. Now, somewhere around here, I do have the visor, which is a cool feature that you can just snap on. Doesn't seem to want to snap, but you get the idea. It gives it a kind of Valkyrie look. Now it's not the exact four prong um, gun laser turret up here that was with the original, uh, but it's understandable what that means. And I think it's a pretty nice looking helmet. It's done much nicer than the classics toy that we've got. Um, which had a huge helmet. He looked like a, a crusader or something with that bucket on top of his head. This is done better. It's just the faceplate and not an entire um, case that goes over the whole head. Now there is light piping in here, but it's it's pretty dim. Doesn't really show through. And this piece has a much clearer plastic on it than the eyes. The eyes are actually quite dark, and light doesn't seem to get uh, in and out of them very easily. And you can really see the size deficiency here when I put him next to um, X-Transbot's version of Megatron. He is definitely not up to being a masterpiece Skyfire slash Jetfire with the bigger figures. Like this is the same size as the MP10 and um, I wouldn't want to put them on the shelf together. I think the best place to display Jetfire here is with old style classics and the occasional nice new figure like i like nightbeat here the bumblebee remold i think he's pretty cool but all in all maybe some of the older classic who we got here tracks bumblebee hound looks pretty cool with these i don't think this fits in with most of the third party and i don't think it fits in with mp stuff i very seldom get out these classics anymore just because a lot of the characters we've been getting better versions from either mp or third party so I feel like, sadly, this Jetfire is destined for the plastic tub with classics. My final thoughts. I think this is a half-decent figure. Um, I bought it online with this weak Australian dollar at the moment and shipping and whatnot. I think it came to less than $80 Australian, which is good because if I had bought the Hasbro version on the shelf here, it would have been about 85 at least, which is really very bad pricing. I mean, right now I saw the shiny version of Tank Megatron on the shelf at Target for $85 to give you some point of reference. I think this was worth buying. Now, I don't I don't love it. I think that it looks good with my classics, but as I said, I'm not having them out that much. It is a little bit cheap. All these modern toys are a bit cheap. That's why I steer clear of them. I primarily bought this because of the character. We have so few Skyfire looking figures that with this head I couldn't help myself, but it is a bit chintzy in some places. Turning it around, I mean, I haven't been showing all these hollow spots during the rest of the review, but they definitely exist, like the back of the bicep here, under the cover on the forearms. It's it's just a bit a bit weak. Uh, he he does a good job of hiding it if you look at him front on, but it's it's definitely noticeable when you hold it in the hand. It feels hollow to the grasp and the weight also is quite low. The face is quite beautiful. Just look at that. It's a good sculpt. Pretty much the head is what sold me on the whole figure. He does have a very heroic proportion. Look at those big shoulders out there. The shoulders are very reminiscent of the those old comics that the first classics um, Jetfire was based off. Now, he, he doesn't really look like Skyfire except for the head. I mean, he's got a lot of cues that make it um, reminiscent of Skyfire, like just the general shapes. But Skyfire was never this big heroic bruiser that this guy looks to be. 
all in all, I'm pretty satisfied. I won't be picking up a bunch of new stuff like I've totally skipped Combiner Wars. The ones that I did buy just to test, I've already sold them. I thought they were pretty weak. This does stand out and, you know, I can recommend him. So this has been my video review for Takara Tommy's version of Jetfire. I'm Odean. Thank you very much for watching.